Hi, welcome back. In this session, we're talking with Terry Slattery. You'll know him. He has been around the industry probably for far too long, I would think, even though I feel like I've been around for far too long as well. He currently works for Net Craftsman. Net Craftsman is a premier integration partner, and they actually work with many Glueware customers today. Welcome, Terry. How are you? Doing great, Greg. It was good yep. to talk with talk networking with you again today. Well, it's talking about software because years ago, you and I used to talk about monitoring and management systems. And here we are talking about software defined and intent and modeling and glueware. And it's kind of a progression that I think you and I have both had a passion for this, um, doing more with less idea of using software instead of using finger defined networking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, the topic that we want to cover today is that you personally and Nets Craftsman more generally are moving beyond the legacy to, modern, to modernize customers' infrastructure. And um, let's talk about that. What is it that, that appeals to you about Glueware? And where, where's the engagement point that you're finding Glueware works? <laughs> Well, it's interesting. And in, in the last couple of segments has been this discussion of technical debt. Yeah. And if you're using scripts and, and things like that, so you started with managing the configuration of the boxes and the devices, and now you're transitioning to managing yet another thing, which is the software that manages the configurations. So yeah. did you make it simpler? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. I think if you go down the, the handcrafted artisanal Python Ansible path, I don't think you do. You do at first, like you start, you know, you automate small tasks and you get some very quick wins. But yeah. over time, you start to, that artisanal approach doesn't scale. Does that make sense? Exactly. And, and I agree wholeheartedly. So we had a, an engagement with a customer uh, that's a, a large utility. And uh, Mike can throw up the slide here that gives some stats on it. Um, the stats aren't particularly net, uh, relevant to the story here. What they needed to do was to move from a former network configuration audit tool. Now they're in utility industry. Hmm. So they have to do regular audits of their infrastructure and make sure that it's secure. Um, we, we've seen the stories about why that's important. Um, so they had to make this transition. And so there were several key steps here. So one was to have an accurate device inventory. They needed to know what was on their network and where it was. They needed to get the configs from all of these devices and begin tracking the changes to those configs. And then they needed to be able to audit those configs and then finally being able to do OS upgrades. So that was kind of the, the starting point here for, for their operation. And it was, it was pretty interesting. So we started off with the installation. Installation went for, for our team, working with them and working with Glueware. In the course of a couple of days, we had it actually was in within a few hours from the time we started the installation to the time we were done was less than a day. So it was up and running at that point. And we started doing device inventory work. So the first step we did in that was import the devices they knew about. I mean, they already had an existing system. So what do you know about import that via CSV, uh, it's a standard import mechanism. And then we use Glueware's internal tool for doing network discovery. And the advantage of that, okay, so you, you have this CSV import, did you cover everything? And the question is in their environment, they needed to guarantee that they had identified all the devices. And that was really important. So they, used, they took advantage of Glueware's internal facilities for doing network discovery. And this allows you to find devices that you don't know about or that devices you've forgotten. If you got installed and somewhere in the installation process, your, your process failed on you. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that happens with human-oriented processes is occasionally well, you a, forget. There's a few things. I've worked for utility companies, and quite often they've got uh, legacy equipment, shall we say. Once yes. it's installed, it's almost impossible to get out. And, you know, upgrading that older gear is actually quite difficult uh, to do manually and in person because you've got to um, get an arcane process and you've got to get it 100% exactly right for the upgrade to happen. Things like TFTP and you've got to have a server and you've got to have, you know, and these commands have to be letter perfect and at two o'clock in the morning after a four hour drive and passing through security gates and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It just doesn't work the way you think it you know human error is a much bigger thing and the impacts are much larger <laughs> exactly but exactly what i also wanted to get into too was the security audit capability because having 
solid configuration management doesn't just reduce the burden. Like I have a big thing about just going home on time. Like I love my job, <laughs> but being at work isn't the reason to be at work, if you know what I mean. The reason to be at work you're, is You're to not married home. to your job anymore, Greg? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> there was a time, but I think I think the <laughs> I think the cynicism got a hold of me at some point. <laughs> exactly. But I think the other side of this is the security angle. And there's there's lots of part like just having good configuration management is security in its own right. But it's oh, also absolutely. about having, you know, having a network that's just stable is security in its own right. But there's also this auditing component, which you found was important. Exactly. So um, it was interesting because the, the whole discovery mechanism allows us to find the mix of devices that we have in the network. And, and in, you get, oh, there's this box out there that we totally forgot about that's been missed by the other system <laughs> and it has this old operating system running on it. So, so we wind up with that. So then we yeah. pull the configs in, we start tracking the, the configs and those are fairly standard processes and you can easily automate that using a script. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so no big magic there. The real benefit starts to come in, as you said, in the auditing mechanisms mm. and being able to say, this config does match what we need it to, to do on the network where yeah. this config is has these exceptions that we need to go address. And there was an example back in August, for example, that, that uh, a big company lost tens of millions of customer data records because according to one of the interviews, the attacker got in through an open router. <laughs> and then pivoted through the firewall. And, and, and then was yeah. able to do lateral movement throughout the yeah. network. It's kind of like, okay, so this is the first concrete example where they broke in through the network. Because networking people are like, oh, they don't, they're not interested in the routers. Well, I'm sorry, they are. <laughs> well, the interesting part there is it's not only just the router that's at fault here. The fact that they were able to pivot through the internal infrastructure suggests that the fault was systemic. The yes. firewall configurations mustn't have been able to be, you know, at the right level. Various devices hadn't been secured. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but you're right. The opening or the entry point was the router. There was the article suggested that as such. Um, I think the other part about audit is also tracking back where it happened. Was there something that was it fixed and it was un that and later was broken? And if so, who and why? And so then you can start to get into root cause. We, we don't, Often in networking, get to root causes because a lot of the time it's DNS. You know, right? I'm joking, right? You know, whatever. It's it's you know cosmic rays or you know mystic packets or you know whatever you want to call them. Um, but sometimes you can just if you can roll back the audit and say so and so did this at this time, but it was a approved change. It was fair. We made a mistake. We know we need to do something to fix it. Right. That's the sort of stuff we're fixing here. Yeah, yeah. So, so in terms of the the implementation with this particular customer, we started with NTP. Um, it was it's a very simple example. It's, it's static. Then we mm -hmm. moved on to more complex things like uh, the AAA services. So the authentication, yeah. <clears throat> the logins, making sure that only authorized people had, had access to the devices, and then eventually moved into monitoring and, and tracking ACLs and making sure that they were compliant. And that's a tough one to, to tackle because <laughs> sometimes you have, to be, you have to be really careful in changing those ACLs or you're going to wind up opening a big hole. So, yeah. so that's... That's one of the critical things. And you um, used to give that to the junior. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because a thousand routers is not fun to, yeah. No. So one of the, the big messages here was that over the course of like two weeks, we, we couldn't get a, a continuous block of time, but we, could be able, we were able to go into the network and in less than a week's total work time, we had Glueware installed. It was running, doing configuration, auditing, and doing what the customer needed. That, that was an incredible just being able to get the system up and running in a very short period of time. It was, it That's, was a great success so, story. So this sort of loops back around where we started with today's videos uh, with, the, with the event was that this time to value for the simplest stuff, this sort of democratization of, of automation. It doesn't require you to master Python and Ansible and then be able to uh, master another framework and a database and a web front end and Python and Ginger and, you know, all the stuff exactly. before you can make one thing. You're, you're sort of hinting at the idea that you got Glueware, you put it on the network and you were right there getting something out of it almost from the, the, the get-go. Exactly. You don't need rock stars in order to make this work. 
hang on, that's not so great. No, you don't need me. Is that what- <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like this. Allow- well, yeah. if you're a rock star, it's great because then no. you're a power user. That's right. Well, I think the flip side here is if you can't be replaced, you can't be promoted. This is something that I've I've talked about a lot. I would I don't want to be doing finger to find networking anymore. I want to be sitting down with the CEO, talking about digital transformation and how to d- double my budget. And you so want to be I able to take a, a vacation. Being, yeah, you know. Sorry. <laughs> So you want to be able to take a vacation. I mean, That's right. I want to be able to take a vacation. I want to be able to do take the company in a new direction to yeah. do something with network. And if some of this stuff is taken care of and it's being done by a software that's being maintained by somebody else, and sure, it's going to cost some money, but that's a feature. That's not a bug. Exactly. And, I don't get paid cost, more if, you know, I don't get paid by the CLI command. Yeah. That, that cost actually translates over into paying for the product. So you either pay for the, the manpower or you pay for the product. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching us today. Terry, is there anything else you want to say in the wrap up? Nope, that, that's it. That's it. It's nice and story. simple. And you've, and you've been winning with this. Like you use this product, you, you go yes. out there and deploy it. Yeah. Yes. So in that sense, you would recommend it in, in the right situation, but you would recommend it. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, on that note, thanks so much for listening to this. We're going to go into some questions and answers in the next segment, uh, where we're going to be taking the questions that people have sent in over the last few. We'll have three or four people on the window there talking about who's going to be answering those questions. Uh, And then we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching this Packet Pushes live stream and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next one.